toe to toe. He said toe to toe, everyone. Let me Well, it's just just really Jake. funny because like look, Jake is basically this is like one of his I don't know, but I I I would say it's, one of his like, primary topics of debate is the honor of the Trinity. And I would be surprised if like anyone has defended the Trinity the way you did and just like basically gave up the laws of logic applying to to God. I mean, you didn't even know how to use words consistently, John. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't I don't mind the criticism. Bring it on. We are. There you go. Yeah, it's totally ridiculous for you to say you can go to toe to toe when you don't even know how you're using words. It's like when James says he folded like uh, Gray and Moppy, which I thought he did, to be honest. And you guys went outraged ballistic. Oh, I know, wanna, I know, I know what it was, Jake. I know what it was. I was criticizing John because I thought he was deceptive as fuck because. Prior to the ba- debate, he was saying, like, I think that I could defend the Trinity better than Praise, and um, who was the other guy? Oh, for sure. Uh, Pedro, I think. Pedro, right. Pedro. So, yeah. so, so then, like, but at the end of your debate, Jake, he's basically saying that the laws of logic don't, um, like, God's not constrained by the laws of logic, right? So I asked him if, and then, he, and then he's trying to claim that that's what he meant the entire time. But then, what would it mean to claim before the debate that he can defend the Trinity better than Pedro? Well, here's or, the issue. Or, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. They didn't so what the fuck? That, well, like, defend against what? Like, he doesn't <laughs> mean contradictions, right? Because. <laughs> No, right, that doesn't apply means, to the Trinity. Well, I'll tell all you he what means, I, Tom, what is I, what he said later on, in the, in, and now I remember in, in that clip. Uh, oh, he basically is, said because is, he yeah. didn't commit to a heresy, uh, that means Correct. he defended better. That that was that well, was his. That, yeah, first and foremost, they were talking about the incarnation, not the Trinity. That's number one, right? So when it comes to the Eutychianism and the, like monotheism, uh, it's not the case. That I would espouse heresies as they did. That, that's you what did I, the I first time I spoke to you, John. And not espousing heresies is a point with regard to the incarnation, Tom. So, I mean, whatever, dude. John, you did the first time I spoke to you, right? I do remember. You had me between Nestorianism and Apollinarianism. You don't think I remember that? I just want to remind you. He got you, you with, the, with Jesus having a human soul as well. Yeah, that was you really bad, actually, him. John. Wait, wait. Jesus what had a human, human soul? soul? What? The first time I spoke to you, John, you denied that Christ had a human soul. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And that was... That was, <laughs> that was like two years ago, though, Jake. I know. I'm just saying you're kind of like mocking Pedro, but Pedro was just basically put in the situation that you were two years ago. So is that really fair? I'm just saying that I would have done better than where. Yeah, you would have done better in that aspect of not making the same mistake, but you uh-huh. you did it a lot worse in that you completely gave up on logic in a sense. Uh, yeah, that's a whole different other discussion, but uh, yeah, I have a certain. I'd actually prefer logic. their position instead of yours, John. Yeah, I mean that's fine. I mean I. Like, I know as far as, like, certain people, they, they consider, like, the logic the end-all and be-all. And, and you know, I, I just I just put God above that. What does that even mean? That fucking means. Yeah, that's, well, I don't know what that means. I mean, and then we we're questioning you about what that's supposed to mean uh, sans creation, as you like to say, or prior to creation. You, you just were waffling all around, dude. All, all I said was that I consider God, that God transcends the laws of logic. It does not mean God uh, contradicts or negates or anything like that. That's what people are pretending. We to get my, that. Of we're asking, I'm we're not asking what it doesn't mean. We're asking what it does mean. And, I, and I've explained what it means numerous times. 
What does it mean? That he's above it. What does that mean? The that, laws that of logic are not like they can't be physically above anything. They're not like physical things. You can't like be above a law of logic. So I don't know what you mean by above. You don't even know what you mean, yeah, John. Like, is it any different than saying God is around the laws of logic? Or inside? Or under? For that matter, what's the fucking difference? God is adjacent He's to silent. the laws of logic. Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys are still there, but the way, the way I look at the laws of logic is such that um, there are tools that we use in the natural universe to make sense of the world, right? Now, when it comes to God himself, uh, he is not subject to it in a sense of, uh, like I said, just using Darth Dawkins' word, uh, like sort of uh, an exhausted way. Uh, God is greater than that. And so... Although we use tools, there are certain mysteries that we cannot use the laws of logic to come to conclusions. Uh, it's the same thing with the laws of nature, uh, where there are things that are seemingly uh, violating the laws of, <clears throat> of logic and so forth. They're just like unexplainable, whether it's gravity breaking down at the quantum level or whatever, whether it's dark energy or whatever, missing matter, whatever. And That's just so, conceding that you don't know what you mean. So what I'm saying is that even though we have these tools that God has established, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we apply these tools to understand the totality of God. I just don't think that's what it's meant for. So you're saying that God, we can't analyze God in a logical fashion? Is that what you're saying, John? I think to some degree that it can help us to understand, uh, but not in totality. And I think that uh, uh, e even like how, like, I may not agree with Dr. Khalil on a lot of things, but how he describes like, uh, you know, like uh, the attributes of God in, in a simple way, and he's the totality of everything. And therefore, when we have these certain attributes, like whether it's like uh, knowledge or love, it is like a partial thing in a sense. And that 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 limited, finite sense uh, cannot comprehend uh, the, the, the the totality. And I kind of uh, agree. Dude, with don't bring up that. Dr. Khalil. Listen, you don't even understand his position. He doesn't believe that God has any attributes whatsoever. So I don't know why you're even saying that, John. Well. He doesn't the believe, way he believes God it is, is beyond. It, it is um, like his essence is a sort of the attributes that we kind of. Uh, no, view that's not of. correct. When you say correct. it's mysterious, John, when you say it's mysterious, how is that not you just conceding that you don't know what it means? What's it? Well, it's, um, yeah, I mean. Mystery <laughs> represents just that. So why would you say I'm saying anything different? I'm not. Yeah. So you don't know what it means for God yeah. to be above the laws of logic. You're just saying. You're just. You're betraying yourself. Why are you well, doing I that? Did, I didn't claim that to be. I didn't claim transcendence to be a mystery. Or what are you talking about? You're saying you can describe some th God in logical ways in some sense, but not in others, right? That's not what you in said? totality. That's correct. Yeah, so how is that not just saying that you don't know what it means? I never said it wasn't just that. Yeah, so you don't know what it means for God to transcend the laws of logic. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. Unbelievable. I'm not talking about I don't know what it means to 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 what transcendence above the logic laws of logic means. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm talking about using the laws of logic to understand the nature of God, right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're, you're saying you don't, there. you're saying you don't understand what it means for God to be triune.
sense that there are three persons, each of which are God, but there's only one God. You're saying no, you don't I'm, understand that. Um, I'm saying I'm saying that it's not um, able. In my opinion, I think. I mean, because I've looked at it as well. Um, I don't think it's completely uh, comprehensible exhaustively. I think there are things that uh, uh, are like paradoxes, are like uh, seeming like dead ends, uh, certain logical entailments that appear to contradict. I fully acknowledge that, certainly. I mean, I've sat there for hours upon hours examining it, but I do think that there are uh, certain truths that are not... Uh, uh, able to be understood and 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 it, thus it's left to some sort of mystery uh because we're limited in our understanding that's how i would under, that's how i would uh, characterize it see i don't know what I, I don't know what you're saying it sounds like it sounds like you're contradicting what you said earlier when you said that god it, it doesn't mean that god is a contradictory entity or something like that but you say oh there's apparent paradoxes are you just saying that it's not in fact contradictory but you just don't know how to resolve the we're talking about two different propositions josh are you just saying that it's god is not in fact contradictory but he appears that way is that all you're saying no what i'm saying is that uh um well what's the paradox thing the paradox has to do with uh not transcendence but it has to do with of the nature of the triune god yeah it's an apparent That's contradiction what... correct right and so you're saying it's not god's not actually contradictory it just appears that way yeah i i don't think it would be uh correct to say that god is contradictory um our apparent contradiction paradoxical I think those would be mysterious. I think those would be the more accurate words. So as far as you're concerned, God just seems like nonsense. It just seems like it's a contradiction. It just seems like it doesn't make any fucking no, sense. No, I don't. I wouldn't but you're say committed that to it actually no, making sense. I wouldn't sense. say that either because what I would say to the unbeliever, I could certainly um, um, see how it seems like nonsense uh, to the one who's maybe not regenerate, who does not have the spirit of God living in them. Well, you said it seems like a paradox to you. yourself that you don't You said it's a paradox to you. This isn't like believer versus disbeliever because you yourself are at least claiming to believe her, be a believer and you can't explain it. Yeah, I think it's possible it. to uh, I think it's possible to know a triune God but without having to understand all the aspects regarding this god it's not all the aspects john you cannot analyze those seven propositions in a logical fashion understanding what the meaning of them are that you're affirming and avoid apparent contradiction you're just affirming them with a specific meaning and it looks like a contradiction and then you're saying it's not an actual contradiction even though i can't tell you why it's not that's exactly what you're doing. Well, I didn't. I didn't say it. It, it is or is not an actual contradiction. Well, what I will say. Yes, you is did. You said God's not contradictory. Yes, you did. You, you just, just said, said God is not contradictory. Yeah, you just said that God. You just said that you would not say That's that correct. God is actually contradictory. That's correct. Okay, so you. Say, so that's not to say I would that say it is not. That's are not you saying, the same John? Are you saying that it's possible for God to be? Uh, contradictory. Yeah, when once you start Actually using like possible and all that stuff, that gets into all. Well, oh, you don't know. I mean, it, you you should be able to say no that it's not possible. Otherwise, you're saying that there's a chance that the laws of logic, at least in terms of how you understand them, don't hold universally. What? Look, why don't you just say? I'm just saying that I'm not committed to saying that it's contradictory. That's what I'm saying. Well, if you hold all those propositions and you can derive a contradiction from those propositions, then you are committed to a contradiction, or you are committed to saying it's contradictory. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's nothing for me to say that there's contradictory. Uh, I, there's a lot. To, yeah. uh, there's a lot to uh, to say that I don't know. Uh, that 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 that's uh, that's. Uh, what is the I don't know based on, John? What is what argument based on? 
it, no, is the I don't know based on you not understanding the meaning of those seven propositions? Because if you understand the meaning and you affirm them and it entails a contradiction, right, then that's just what it is. Well, so it's kind of hard to, you either have to, hard reject, to describe. You either I, I have do to think reject that. one of the premises, John, or you have to say that you don't understand the meaning of one and that well, the contradiction is arising from some like unarticulated equivocation, in which case think, and you don't really know what you're saying or what you're affirming. I think that uh, there's a couple of ways to say this. Uh, philosophically, I can say that I am in the dark. I have no problem saying that, right? Uh, now, um, in a sense of experientially, I would not say that. I think that I have an experience of the Holy Spirit, of Christ, of the Father, and in a, in a way that represents personhood, right? And and uh, that's kind of how I like I would say it. But then, if you want to critique it internally, uh, in from from philosophical standards, uh, there would there would not be a, a, a coherence necessarily in that explanation. I have a, so I, I, but but I have no problem with that. I have an experience with square circles, but when I analyze it, I just I can't see how it's not contradictory, but it does, you know, but I do, but I do have the experience of square circles. See how stupid you well, sound, John? Well, I mean, yeah, it sounds, uh, if you want to, you know, draw a false analogy, sure. What's false about the analogy? Well, what's false about the analogy is, is that, uh, that the, the contradiction is definitionally demonstrable. Yeah, but... If you accept all those propositions, that's the, the same that uh, lead to a contradiction. That the same thing is true. Yeah, I don't necessarily accept the propositions as stated. It can be the case that uh, they're not <laughs> understood numerically, or whatever the case is. Yeah, but and then, so, then that what you're saying, John, is you either understand them in a different way to avoid the quote unquote apparent contradiction. Or you affirm them, but you don't understand what they mean. Yeah, what I would say. So which one is it? What Are I you would give an alternative analysis of those uh, seven propositions what, to avoid what, what the contradiction, I, or are you just affirming them and saying you don't know what they mean? No, what I would say is that I do understand them uh, in a sense of uh, numeric and uh, analytic identity, or not analytic, but in terms of identity and and how that plays out in terms of, uh, you know, like just denying law, classical identity. Like and you're just denying classical identity. And you're saying that they're going to be analyzed in some type of relative identity, right? Well, I mean, from what I, from what I've heard from people is that an acceptance of relative identity is not necessarily a denial of classical identity. Well, that, that depends if you're talking about the pure or impure theory. So are you taking the pure theory or the impure theory? I, to be honest, I don't even know either theory. Well, that's what I'm saying. So you don't know what you're affirming, John. Just because I don't know the term and what those terms entail, okay, and my so, inability to answer it uh, doesn't mean that I don't hold to one so or the other. know that I hold to one or the other. Then. Yeah, let me explain it to you. So the pure um, relative identity theorist is going to say something like um, the, the relation of classical identity doesn't exist, right? So it's not about, well, it's applicable to created things, but it's not applicable to God. It's just going to say to ask whether or not, right, something is identical to itself or to speak in terms of the relation of classical identity is just nonsense. It's just it doesn't make any sense. So that's what a pure <laughs> relative identity Trinitarian uh, theorist is going to say. The impure uh, theorist is going to say something like, well, um, they're not going to deny classical identity, but they're going to say something like when it comes to the Trinity, um, you could have what's called numerical sameness without identity. And then they'll give examples like going all the way back to Aristotle. Uh, with the lump and the statue, and say that you can, be, and it's basically counting by a relation other than classical identity. So they're going to say something like, 
in the case of the Trinity, we can count gods by a relation other than classical identity, so such that you can have numerically one thing, even though they're not identical. So those are the yeah. two options really on the table. Okay. Right? So if you ask so me on which the surface one are you level, to? yeah, I would probably tell you impure then on the surface level. Right. And then I'm going to just tell you that the problem with that is, I mean, th there's numerous problems, right? And I can go through a list of critiques, but one of them is an internal inconsistency in the sense that when you count the number of gods, you're counting by uh, a relation other than classical identity in order to avoid polytheism where there being three gods. But when you're counting the number of persons, you're counting by the relation of classical identity such that you're saying that there are three persons, right? Because they're individuated by the fact that they're discernible or they're not identical to one, one another. And so even within the Trinity itself, when it comes to counting gods, you want to count by a relation other than classical identity, something like division or separability. Uh, but when it comes to persons, because you're, it's part of the theory to say that there are three persons, you want to count by the classical identity relation, right? So that's an inconsistency in the model, John. But I mean, even apart from that, we can go through numerous critiques of why um, even the examples of like the lump in a statue and um, what's known as material constitution is not really analogous to God because he's not really made of material stuff. So how is that going to work? And, and, and what's the analogy supposed to be between the material and the quote unquote God stuff? Um, then you also have the problem of the diachronic relation uh, versus in the Trinity, it's, it's synchronic, right? So, I mean, there are all sorts of problems with this model, yeah. John. it's not like yeah, sure, really no, sure there anything. is, but just just if someone were to just ask me, the way I view it is like, for example, like let us make man in our image. Uh, what does that mean? Is it counting more than one? Uh, when you look at the word, the plurality of the word Elohim, uh, representing God, a plural understanding, is that counting more than one? And so, uh, I would think that in a sense, it is counting more than one but also equally so it is talking about one god yeah the, what you're just saying though when you count persons you're cl you're counting by classical identity such that you're gonna say that there are three persons but when it comes to counting gods you're going to inconsistently count by a relation other than classical identity something like division so you're going to say something like because um the persons um, cannot be individu individuated by time and space, and they're inseparable from one another, or they count as one, and things of that nature, given the doctrine of perichoresis. But that can just easily apply in like manner to the idea that, well, if, if that's the case, then why should we count the persons as three persons? We should count them as one person. So if you have one God... Well, that, that would be that, modalism. Then, Kind of, no, it? but no, but I'm just no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if that's the way that you're going to count when it comes to, well, we can't, we can't individuate gods because um, we have this special case where, you know, the persons are immaterial, so they cannot be divided and they can't be separated by time and space, so we should count them as one god, right? Even though, from an identity perspective, at least classical identity, they would count as three. But then when it comes to persons, right, we can apply the same exact criteria that they're, they're inseparable from one another, they're not distinguished by time and space, et cetera, et cetera, and yet you count them as three. So it's an inconsistency in your method of counting. And that's just because you want to avoid the absurd idea that there are three gods even on the face of it from your own model because you're proclaiming that there's only one god. Well, I mean, if you look at it that way, uh, <clears throat> I didn't see that link that you sent me about the Dr. Sejuade who said there are three gods. Yeah, because uh, he's it's honest. It's a very short video. <laughs> Watch it. Because he's honest, because he, he basically says, and he admits, right, that if you count by classical identity, 
then it's just going to follow that you have three gods. And so he's, he'll say, well, there's a God, there's one God in one sense. So you've got like God with the capital G, and then you've got three gods in another sense, God or three gods with a lowercase g. And he's just willing to bite the bullet and affirm that because he's not into this, at least now, uh, he might change his theory later on, I don't know, uh, of counting in this inconsistent fashion, right? So that's very clear. I mean, he just admits in a certain sense, yeah, there are three gods. Now I just say, okay, I mean, I've done my job. If once somebody's uh, affirming that, then at least they're internally consistent. But most Christians don't want to but, even verbalize that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to verbalize it either. However, yeah, because that's the fifth um, one, John. Uh, yeah, but but what what he says would not necessarily be polytheism, though, in the way that he understands it. Just because he verbalizes it as there are three gods does not necessitate <laughs> yeah. a, a tritheism, yeah. or, or does it? Yeah. I don't think it does. That's what he says. I mean, he says in the video that in a he matter of tritheism. speaking. No, no, he says, he says, in a manner of speaking, monotheism is not about the number of gods that there are. <laughs> so, are you willing to accept that? Well, no, but I'm sure, I'm sure, he, I'm sure he's saying that in a specific context, though. Yeah, I mean, dude, the the video is like a minute and a half long. Just watch it, John. I mean, you've got plenty of time on your hands. He's and you can watch the whole video if you want for other context, but the context is quite clear um, because Dale Tuggy is pressing him on this issue, right? So he solved a particular problem, sometimes known in the literature as the "Who is God" problem or the identification problem, right? But he he hasn't really solved the tritheism problem, and he just kind of bites the bullet on that, and partially because of the fact he's um, following up from Richard Swinburne. He's a, he's a Swinburne fanboy, and those are his own words, not mine. Um, in which, I mean, Swinburne wrote an entire paper back in the 80s, arguing for the fact that there are three gods. I mean, this is very clear. I mean, he has a, he literally has a paper called, could there be more than one God? And then he goes on to argue, well, yes, in fact, there could be, and there is, there is there's three gods. So, yeah. Now, I mean, now when no you sent me representation going on. Yeah. No, I mean when you sent me that video, I didn't see it, but I'd never heard of that before. A Trinitarian claim there are three gods. Now, interestingly enough, about maybe two or three weeks after that, when you sent it to me, uh, there was this guy named Max and he was kind of talking that kind of a language with you. I don't know if you remember that. He sent it to me directly because he tried to give the um the method of counting by a relation other than classical identity namely division or separability and um and i just asked him straight up so are you granting that if you count by classical identity that there are three gods and he said yeah of course i have to grant that it was very clear and i gave the other objections um to his and, view which i've stated and here me, and he, did, he didn't have a clear response and i'm not knocking him for that he said he would think about it and get back and he seems like a nice guy so i'm not knocking him in any way i'm just saying I have not seen a good response to my objections to that model. I mean, it seems to me that it's acceptable maybe to say, if you're looking at the classical laws of identity, that one can say, well, there are three gods there. I mean, as, as weird as it sounds to my ear, conceptually, if that's the way it's reconciled, uh, I might. Okay, not, John, can you just not have a problem can you just with that? repeat? Can you just repeat that for the record one more time, John? <laughs> you want to get a soundbite about the three guys? Yeah, I just, I just, I just want you to repeat that again. So, so you're saying, if we go by classical identity, then it's just going to follow that on the Trinity, there are three gods, right? Yeah, as far as the seven premises that you have, uh, you know, in that little the little chart that you always do, um, the Father being God, and that, um, yeah, if, if it's understood in I mean, a classical sense, well, yeah, yeah, each each person would be a God in that sense, right? Yeah, and there would be three gods, right? 
from the laws of classic identity, I think that's what it would entail, right? Yeah, so just confirmation. By classical identity, the Trinity would entail three gods, correct? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say yes, but it, it appears that one could see it, it that, seems way. that way. Certain... It seems that way to you? So now you don't have a problem with Josh saying that, do you? I'd probably have to. I'd probably have to watch a video. It's only like you said. It's only like under two minutes, right? Yeah, it's under two minutes. Sometimes it's all about like what is being meant by it, and maybe he's saying if you look at it this way, yeah, there there would be no problem saying there are three gods here in the sense of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Maybe that's what he's saying. Well, no, he actually goes further. He doesn't say it's a problem. He's saying that you would have to say it. He actually says it's a necessity that, well, if this is what we're saying, then yeah, in a certain sense, you'd have to say there are three gods. That's what he says. Now, do you think that the way he worded it would, would be, like, heretical? Do you think it's a, a heretical statement? Yeah, can you show me... Can you show me a uh, anywhere in the Bible that it says that? Anywhere in any catechism or um, conciliar statement that would use oh, such language? Only in the sense of uh, like maybe like Elohim type of uh, an understanding. And then maybe in the New Testament you could possibly find where, uh, I mean, I hate to invoke, like for lack of a better example, like something like John seventeen three, but... I, I know that's a really bad example. John seventeen three. How would you go to that verse? I know. To try to prove that. I'm just okay. Like I said, for lack of a better example, is what I meant. Seriously, dude. Okay, so John seventeen three. This is eternal life, that they may know you. Speaking of the Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Somehow, that is is. A good verse to appeal to to actually validate that there are three gods. It might it might really, be John? further down. Hang on, hang on, man, wait. That's the verse I was thinking of. Come uh, on, dude. I know your scripture better than you, John. I was watching a main event of a pay per view. Are you arguing for three gods now? Have you? Yeah, John. Poly John piece? has just uh, John has just accepted. Oh, John has I'm just sorry. accepted. John ten thirty is what I meant. Oh, John ten thirty. Okay. Oh boy, John, this is not really good for you, dude. I mean, you should have stuck to the to the uh, logical issue. This three gods business, this is really bad. I'm just saying, this is bad, dude. Like you thought the Christians were on your ass about <laughs> your your statements about Calvinism and Reformed theology. They get a whiff of you saying this three gods business, man. You're gonna be blacklisted. Well, I mean, <laughs> I didn't actually say that. You said there's no problem with it. Jake is gonna put this, you realize Jake is going to put this on his channel with Christian. Oh, you don't have to. Gods. Dude, you don't have to worry about me. You got to worry about Tom Rabbit. I mean, that's the guy you got to worry about. <laughs> Forget about me. He's, he's recording this now, probably. And if he's not here, he'll hear it later. <laughs> the, way, the way I would say it is that... Uh, the Elohim could be understood as a plurality of God. And if you want to even use like uh, two gods, three gods, um, I think there's room for that type of language that can still uh, maintain Trinitarianism and monotheism. Yeah. So in a, in the simplest form, you're saying that you think in a certain context, a Trinitarian can affirm the proposition that there are three gods, correct? Uh, with proper context, I think uh, if, if, if represented as Elohim, uh, I would say yes. Yeah. Okay, so in the case of Elohim and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit falling underneath that in some sense, a Trinitarian can affirm that there are three gods, correct? I think in that sense, uh, the answer would be yes. Okay. 
Um, well, you can see oh, Jesse's. No, you can see Jesse's reaction to that, sir. I mean, this is what I'm trying to say to you, John. Um, I actually think that it's sort of a fallout of the view. So, in one sense, I commend you of it. But in another sense, doesn't it bother you to even verbalize that? Doesn't it sound not? Doesn't it sound problematic? Yeah. Doesn't it like does. the inner work no, of the Holy honest. Spirit. It, doesn't it the does. inner workings of the Holy Spirit like say, "Come on, John, you devil! What are you actually saying here?" Don't the, you feel that? Well, the only thing I feel is not the words itself, but one of the possible uh, uh, senses of how that sent, uh, statement can be understood as. And so, if if it is understood in, in a certain sense, well, then yes, that's highly problematic. But and that's why that's why there's a, sometimes a lot of amb ambiguity in certain phrases and words um, that can be heard a certain way or or understood a certain way that's not necessarily being stated. Yeah. So what do you think about that, James? Do you think it's ever appropriate for a Trinitarian Christian to say that there are three gods in a certain sense? No, I think it's he's better off appealing to ignorance, stupidity, or a logical contradiction before you ever say there are three gods in Christianity. Like you should never say that. You you're okay with saying it's a logical contradiction, James? No, I'm saying that if given the option, I would much rather call myself an idiot than ever say three gods. And I was giving you other ridiculous statements that would be more acceptable than you ever saying there are three gods. You think in uh, you John. think uh, logical contradiction is more acceptable than three gods as Elohim? I, I'm I'm telling you that from the Christian paradigm, believing that somehow true contradictions can exist, fiddle farting with that is way better than ever pretending that there's three gods. Do you, do you believe that true contradictions can exist, uh, James? So, Are you John, so, so, John, what you're saying is three gods is more likely than the flat earth? Unbelievable. <laughs> That's not related. That was a good one, Mo. I like that, Mo. You're welcome. That's no, I'm just Hold saying. On a second. I just came back. I I came back. I took a shower and I'm coming back. And Tom, you missed it, dude. John's now a poly. Take... John's now a poly thief. Yeah, Tom, you're gonna have yes. to revisit this, buddy. I gotta leave the replay up so that everybody can hear poly polytheist Lee. <laughs> Is that um poly polytheist? Oh, uh... <laughs> oh damn it! You go. This is better. Or Pollyanna, something to do with Pollyanna. New room. Polly. Polly there you go, perfect. <laughs> yeah, John, honestly, in a certain sense, you, you you were sort of better off just being in, like, mystery land, dude. Mm. I mean, Aren't they all? I don't know yeah. why. All of them better off being in Although he's land. a bit honest by, by sort of admitting this, in a sense. I, I will give you credit for that. You're saying friend. that the rest of us Trinitarians aren't honest there, Jake. Yeah, I think that, look, we all went to elementary school and we all learned how to count. And if you count by identity, then you have three gods. So to say that we should count when it comes to the gods and the Trinity by some other relation. Yeah, I do see that as like potentially some form of dishonesty or cognitive dissonance. Yeah, we well, I don't think you're counting the one. Being. Yeah. The, uh, we start with the being and then go to the person. So we don't have three separate things. We have one thing. Yeah, I mean, the Constitution. John said you have three gods. The Constitution. Of oh, I know what John said. To me, the issue is three consciousnesses uh, represents uh, a tritheistic God, right? So wait, you're is saying the conceptual law? Uh, which, which to me, which to me is far worse than the conversation I had with Jake earlier about the three persons, right? Because as far as the three persons, our three, I'm sorry, the three gods that we're talking about, we're not talking about <laughs> uh, individual consciousnesses within within the persons. John, that was are, never are you a tritheist? 
Are you a John, genius, John? Did you just like inadvertently say there are three gods? Where John are? I what said the three gods that we're talking about earlier today. Okay. So are you accusing Jesse Palm of tritheism? Well, I'll say it this way. Anytime you mention tritheism, I do think that entails tritheism and polytheism. Three consciousnesses is an entailment of that. That's what I would say. So John, you, are Jesse you a tritheist? tritheism? Are I you mean, a tritheist, John? I think I would say that Jesse's view entails sort of a tritheism. Why won't you talk about tri John? Are you a tritheist? Of course not. Wow, oh, John. So you're you're, you're saying times. you're saying right now, John, you think that Jesse's model of the Trinity, which he just explained earlier, entails tritheism, correct? It might involve quadratheism or whatever. Oh, so it might be even four gods. So you're just you're throwing an extra one. That's what you're saying. I mean, he didn't um, actually explicitly no. say there's four consciousnesses here. Yeah, but you think it entails it, John. Forget about what he said. You think he? I'm he, just gonna. I'm just gonna. His position simple. entails at least three entails. gods, maybe four. I do, yeah, without putting three or four out there, I do think it entails polytheism. Okay, so you think Jesse is a polytheist, correct? Yeah, I'd hate to say it, but I think that's the entailment of that particular view of multiple consciousnesses. Wow, and you're not just well, declaring wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesse. I have a question for you. Do you just hold on? That hold on. I actually think you're right, John, but um, I want to ask you this. You're not just calling Jesse a polytheist um, just because he rebuked you in the previous room, right? It's got nothing no, to do with that. Not. This, okay. this is so a you discussion I've had with that. them going back a year, Jesse. I, I mean, uh, Jake. Okay, so what well, we've had... When, and he was, he was making me out to be some sort of heretic, and I said, dude, I'm telling you, like, that's problematic. And then it got to the point where when I had the opportunity, I asked Matt Slick, and uh, he affirmed one consciousness, right? Yeah, and, but then did you hear James that, earlier? Some other reform people were actually holding the three consciousnesses. So there, there, was, there was a split view in the reform circles because maybe they don't think about these things, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. John, let's just be clear. Let's summarize what just happened. So. Earlier today, you admitted, and Tom played the clip, and there was actually more to it than that, but you, you've admitted in a certain sense, um, it may be appropriate to say that there are three gods. And then at the same time, as an added bonus, you're saying that Jesse is also a tritheist. So Wait a minute, got, wait a minute. Also, I'm not Yeah, a so you, you've basically affirmed three gods, and then you're saying that Jesse's view entails three gods. So it's like we got a two for one. Yeah, but wait, Jake, do you do you do you does John hold that the the classical laws like for of, example of logic Jesse? lead sorry sorry do, does John affirm that the classical laws of uh logic entail tritheism or polytheism? Is that his view? Yeah, he, he said he said um that classical if you affirm classical identity uh then on the trinity there's going to be three gods oh well that yeah, that's interesting that's that you say that jake because uh, about five minutes ago you know ten five whatever john said that he affirms the classical laws so yeah you're a tritheist john well he's admitted in a certain sense there are three gods yeah so we've got John admitting that about his own position, and then he's saying that Jesse's position entails that. I'm just wondering why he's upset with that, given that he doesn't seem to have a problem with three gods. When I, when, I, when I talk about when I talk about like three gods in a sense of the Father being God, the Son being God, the Holy Spirit being God, it is not the case that I that I consider. 
like three minds, three consciousnesses, right? And so Jesse holds a view that does entail that. And so they're not the same view. It's, it's, yeah, but John, it doesn't matter whether you think that three minds is sufficient for there being three gods, but on your view, right, you think there's something else about your view that's different, that's sufficient for there being three gods. So that's not really the concern. The concern is that, okay, you think that Jesse in view, in light of the fact that he believes in the Trinity, well, there are three minds, well, the there are three gods. Oh, hold on a second. And then on yes, your view, whatever it is, gods, you know that. Yeah. Okay. So you're just in the same way with your Calvinism, which I also agree you're you're pretty spot on. You're just a bit braver to admit there are three gods. Only in the sense of the Father being God, the Son being God, and the Holy Spirit being God. I still believe in the plurality of God, uh, one God in Elohim. And I, and, uh, you know, I, I, I still believe in one God, right? However, when you look at uh, the persons being God in the classical identity sense, I do think that um, it can be understood as three gods. However, right, um, it's not necessarily viewed as three separate gods, but like there's distinction. And, and that's why it's not polytheism. It's really uh, one God that can, when looked at the persons, viewed only in that sense as three gods. That's how it, that's how I think it's properly understood. To say three, that would just to be say three gods and to say uh, three separate gods is, is just to, to, to the even same make thing. it more clear. I'm not talking about three essences. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're talking about three individuals that instantiate the same divine essence uh, and I don't know if I would to be a god hold on hold on or entities. Uh, uh, because because you believe that the father son and holy spirit are not identical right i don't believe they're yeah, identical. so they're in that sense they're individuals mm. i'm saying i'm saying that to be a god is just to fully possess the divine nature and each one of the persons fully possess the divine nature and so each one of them count as a god and there are three so there are three gods yeah all, all of that i don't have an issue um with that uh however there's a danger in once again just in the language it can be used in a certain way and God, God is really not understood from from the sense of classical identity. Um, God is understood in the, in the sense of uh, one essence that represents three people or three persons, I should say. And whether whether these persons are understood in a classical uh, identity in terms of counting is is really of no consequence to me. Dude, you just said God is not understood in classical identity. But then on the other hand, you said, well, in a certain sense, there are three gods, but that's based on classical identity. So you're right. just contradicting yourself, John. I mean, you no, wouldn't be able to I'm make that statement that, if, with, if, with if regard you weren't to the counting. Persons, it can be understood through classical John, identity. John, you, you've made too many mistakes today. Well, like, with regard why don't to you the call it a night? Of, of God, it is, it is understood in a sense of one god i don't think that's yeah john that might be a good idea it might be just time to just fully recline and turn off the cabin light yeah just, kind of like, just, just call it know, a shut night. her down for the night yeah wrap it all up in a nice bow and leave it all to tomorrow yeah in any case i mean i know you guys want to hyper focus on me you don't care about james's comments or, or jesse's comments that's okay i mean uh, James's comment? What was James's comment? What are you talking about? 
Oh, James said something like, uh, he says, uh, uh, yeah, war stories. It, it, we're not interested, John. Yeah, of course you're not. So, yeah, I, I mean, I was going to tell Jake, but you don't want to. I don't care. It's not important. Seemed like you wanted to bring it up, so you obviously thought it was important, right? Well, I was going to bring it up, but it's, I mean, don't, I don't have to say it. Huh. May, maybe I'll I'll let you know, Jake, uh, someday. When we have a time. It's not a big deal. Yeah, John, I just want to say, look, um, I think you're pretty honest about your Calvinism, and in this case, about your tritheism. And um, I don't think, in, that, in, in either instance, you're really doing anything wrong. I think you're just, you know. Well. Seen I, I where, really, seen what listen, what your views entail, I the term and I think you're just more honest than the the other Calvinists, and I think most of them are just either ignorant or dishonest. So I want well, to commend you for that, sir. I don't think you've well, done anything really wrong tonight at all. I, I think, I, I, don't I, I and I'm I mean that tritheism. sincerely, John. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't use the label, label tritheism. So. Yeah, I know you don't use the label, but I'm saying in the sense you're willing to admit that, yes, on classical identity, it's just going to follow that there are three gods, and I can appreciate that. Whereas the other guys won't even come close to admitting that. So, yeah, John, I think you're actually more honest than 